Okay, today we are going to Recoleta Cemetery to see the grave of Eva Duarte Perón. Let's go. But we're not only going to visit the tomb of Eva Perón. We are also going to try to visit the tomb of Juan Domingo Perón. But doing so is a little bit more complicated and I will tell you why uh, but right now uh, my train is about to show up so gotta go so why is it why is it easy to find uh, the tomb of Eva Perón and not as easy to find the tomb of Juan Perón well Eva Perón uh, her tomb is in Recoleta Cemetery Recoleta Cemetery is a very, very well-known tourist destination. Pretty much everybody is a tourist, I think, who comes to uh, who comes to Buenos Aires. At some point, they visit Recoleta Cemetery. And they go and they see the tomb of Eva Duarte Perón. And the reason that it's a little harder for Juan Perón is because his tomb is actually out in a place called San Vicente, which is a few train stops, uh, well, more than a few train stops outside of the city. Uh, but interestingly, he was not always buried there. His body was moved there in 2006. And before that, he was in Chacarita Cemetery, which is another cemetery in Buenos Aires, much larger than Recoleta. And we're gonna go there as well, because we wanna see where he used to be buried before his body was moved. And you might be asking, why did they move his body? And that is a very good question. Uh, I'm gonna go sit down on this bench over here. Next, actually, we're gonna sit down on a different bench. This is like right next to this dog park. And the dogs are going absolutely insane over here. You can see. Yeah. They're adorable, but uh, it's really loud. And if we want to talk about uh, Eva Perón and Juan Perón and why their bodies got moved around so much, we're gonna have to go somewhere else. So let's get across the street here. See if we can find some place. Here's a nice uh, shot of Recoleta neighborhood, by the way. Recoleta is a uh, very, uh, very, very bougie neighborhood. This is, uh, this is where the other, the other side, the other half uh, lives in Buenos Aires. So let's see if we can find a nice little spot. Or you know what, maybe we'll just do this as a walk and talk. So, so why did they move Juan Perón's body? Uh, so in 19, I believe, 87, uh, Juan Perón um, was in Chacarita Cemetery. His body was there. Chacarita Cemetery is a much larger cemetery. And there's a lot of famous people buried there too, but... Um, Recoleta is kind of like a very exclusive cemetery, if that makes any sense. They don't just allow anybody to be buried there. And uh, uh, Chacarit Cemetery is more like the uh, cemetery of the people. Uh, it's very, very big. It's almost the size of like its own neighborhood. Uh, and uh, Perón's family uh, have their tomb there. A lot of, when, when you get buried in Argentina, you get buried in the family tomb a lot of the time. Uh, and the Duarte family tomb is here in Recoleta. And Eva Duarte Perón is buried there. Now, the Perón family tomb is in Chacarita. And in 87, uh, after Juan Perón had been dead for uh, more than 10 years, uh, someone, and it's still to this day unknown who, 
Uh, they broke into the grave and they desecrated his body and they stole, among other things, his hands. That is not a joke. Uh, they cut off his hands and they stole them. And his party, the Justicialista party, they were in power still at the time. And whoever it was that, uh, that stole his hands, they ransomed them. They sent letters to the party leaders asking for $8 million. And that's $8 million in 1987. So that's just the beginning of the story. Uh, I cannot begin to explain how much weirder it actually gets, uh, but it does. And um, I would say it's, it's, it's not uncommon to have uh, a lot of strange stories associated with the bodies of famous people in Argentina. Uh, especially people who were uh, very, very famous and influential political figures, as were Juan Perón and Eva Perón. Uh, we're actually here next to the cemetery. You can see across the street is the wall, the wall to the cemetery, the Recoleta, where Eva Perón is buried. And uh, unfortunately, Eva Perón's body has its own kind of uh, macabre story uh, having to do with it being moved around and, uh, and desecrated. Still trying to find just a nice place where we can sit down and uh, try and talk a little bit about Eva Perón and Juan Perón. I, mean, I realize I haven't even told you why they're important. Some people who are watching the video might know why they're important. Uh, if you study history, because, you know, they are major historical figures, uh, but others of you may not know, may not know why they're important. So, I guess I can get into it a little bit. So, uh, Juan Perón is back in the uh, 1950s, or well, let's go back to the 40s. Uh, he actually um, was, uh, took power in the 1940s. Uh, before he took power, there was a period of... Um, like a military dictatorship. And Argentina actually has a long history of swinging back and forth between uh, democracies and military dictatorships. So there'll be a democracy, it'll last for, you know, 10 years or so, and uh, then there'll be a military coup. And the military will take over for a decade or so. Eventually the people will get fed up with the military coup, the military junta, and uh, then they'll, uh, they'll, Usually to appease to appease the masses and to prevent uh, a revolution, the military will usually allow for elections and uh, democracy will come back. It's one of the reasons why in the last 40 years, since 1983, Argentina, having been a democracy and not had any military coups since 1983, is actually kind of a big deal for Argentina. Um, so, you know, it's one of the longest periods that they've gone in this country uh, without uh, a military dictatorship. So, uh, all right, so Juan Perón. In, uh, I want to say, 1943, he was part of a, uh, a revolution uh, that took power, and uh, he was uh, a government official. And in 1946, he was elected president. And he was president for uh, for almost a decade and he was extremely extremely popular i mean that's just kind of an uh, understatement about how popular juan perón was he was so popular amongst the people uh because he was seen as like this candidate who was really looking out for the people he pushed through a lot of reforms for labor uh including um a lot of uh paid holidays for workers, also including wage increases for workers, um, and it's something that uh, was
was very, very important. It made him extremely popular, extremely popular amongst the working class uh, in Argentina. But not only did he do that, he was also able to work with, uh, with like, um, the wealthy, uh, wealthy industrialists um, and, and, and form essentially a consensus amongst all of them. So he was, he was very, very, very popular. But he's also a very controversial figure in Argentina and around the world. If you ask some people, they'll tell you that he is just a populist fascist. If you ask other people, they'll tell you that he is uh, a socialist, man of the people. Um, and it's hard to it's hard to figure out exactly where he stands on the political spectrum because Peronism, as they call it, isn't really a political ideology per se. It's more like a political brand. In fact, the descendants of the Peronist party are still um, still running in elections. In fact, Sergio Massa, who was just defeated in the most recent election, is uh, a Peronist. And it's interesting because the party has split into many different factions. Uh, election just pre previous to this one, um, there were actually like three out of the four candidates, I think, running were Peronists. They're all running against each other. So, so it's not exactly, like I said, a political ideology. It's more like a political brand. And that's why Juan Perón is so important to Argentina and the history of Argentina. It's because um, in one way or another, descendants of Peronism, um, either actual uh, Perón, like, you know, family, like his wife, Isabel Perón, or others who are uh, political descendants, his party, have won something like nine out of the last 11 elections. I mean, they've basically been in power, um, you know, more or less, for about 80 years since uh, Juan Perón took power back in the 40s. Um, like I said, there have been some military dictatorships uh, sprinkled in there as well, but for the most part, when um, Argentina has been uh, a democratic country, having democratic elections, um, the uh, Peronists have been have been in power for, for quite some time. It's one of the other reasons why uh, the fact that uh, Millet won uh, and he defeated uh, Massa, who is a Peronist, is uh, is very significant, historically significant for the country. So that's why Juan Peron is important to the history here. Why is Eva Peron important? Well. She was a actress and a very famous uh, figure. And when she married Juan Perón, she went into political activism. And she did a lot of things for, um, for working people in Argentina. She was seen as, um, as like the uh, spiritual, um, uh, spiritual face of the country. She also did a lot to advance um, women's involvement in politics, and she uh, she died young. Uh, tragically, she had cervical cancer, and she died in uh, I believe 1952, uh, just a few years after uh, she was married uh, to Juan Perón. And you know, I think anytime you're famous and extremely popular. Involved in, in politics and and you know in the situation that she was in, and you die young tragically, you're going to be remembered. And she has been remembered um, throughout the throughout the years. Um, for people outside of Argentina who don't study history, you probably will know that there was a movie made about her, starring Madonna as Eva Peron. A movie called Evita, very popular. And that's probably most people's touch point for. Uh, for, uh, you know, the story of uh, Juan and Eva Perón. Um, across the street here, trying not to get run over. Uh, so, why was uh, Eva Perón's body moved around? Well, after uh, she died, Juan Perón was still in power. He was in power for a few years after. But he uh, 
ultimately was overthrown in a military coup. And he was uh, exiled. He, ex he was exiled to Spain uh, and among other places. You know, he spent, he was outside of uh, Argentina, out of the country for like 20 years, uh, mostly in Europe. And the military uh, junta that took power, they were, uh, they were very afraid that um, the people who, you know, supporters of Perón were going to rally the people and rise up and revolt against them, uh, which is definitely a possibility. And one of the things that they were very afraid of is that Eva Perón's body, which, by the way, after she died, Juan Perón had spent $100,000, and that's $100,000 in 1952. Uh, he had spent that money to have her uh, embalmed and preserved. So basically, the uh, you know you could you could her her body was on display, and she looked like she did. Uh, she was preserved. She looked like she did when uh, when she was still alive, and she became this sort of symbol of Peronism, and the junta was very very afraid that uh, that she her body would basically become a symbol of what would be a potential revolution against their power. So, uh, what did they do? Well, they stole her body. And the story only gets crazier and darker from here, but uh, stay with me. The story is they, at first, put her body into, uh, like into a truck. And for a year or more, they moved it around from different places in, uh, in Argentina. They moved it around to different clandestine places uh, so that it was hidden. Um, and eventually, uh, they, they ended up sending her body to Italy under a fake name and burying it there under a fake name. Um, before that, there's actually a story that I read that one of the people who was involved in the stealing of her body, and one of the people who, uh, um, who was involved in, I guess, keeping watch over her body, uh, the story goes that he, in the middle of the night, um, mistook his wife in his home for the ghost of Eva Perón because the body was actually being kept there and he shot and killed his wife accidentally um, thinking that she was the ghost of Eva Perón. At least that is what he testified uh, at his trial. So who knows? Maybe he just had beef with his wife and used that as an excuse. You never know. Um, someone who, I guess, is willing to steal someone else's body and hide it in their house. You never know what their motivations are going to be. Um, found a nice, uh, really nice park here to sit down and keep talking about this a little bit more. There's this giant, crazy looking tree behind me. Anyway, let's get back to it. So, so her body uh, has, has been you know, moved around, like, like I said, it got shipped to another country, to Italy, and was buried um, there under a false name. And what happened was, later, when uh, the, the military junta that had taken power, uh, ultimately from Juan Perón, back in the 50s, uh, in the 1970s, the early 70s, there was a lot of um, populist uprising former Peronists and current Peronists, and uh, the, the military dictatorship was no longer going to be able to hold power. And so as a sort of an olive branch to, uh, to the Peronists, they, uh, they had the body exhumed, brought back. Juan Peron was uh, essentially unexiled and allowed to return to the country. And lo and behold, he, uh, he got elected president again. 
So, like, 20 years, roughly, after he was uh, overthrown and exiled, he came back and he got elected president. Uh, I don't know that the timeline that I'm getting is exactly, exactly right, but this is about how it happened. Uh, so he, he was elected president again, but he was old and he wasn't in great health. Um, and uh, he died shortly after. And his then uh, um, current wife, Isabel Perón, his third wife, was elected president. And she was the one who ultimately had Eva's body moved to Recoleta Cemetery, which is the uh, famous, exclusive, rich person cemetery, basically. Uh, and, you know, the who's who's of, of, uh, of Argentine society are buried in Recoleta Cemetery. And not just, you know, recently. I mean, this goes back for a long time. It's been a very exclusive uh, cemetery, a very exclusive place to be buried uh, for many, many, many years. So, uh, Isabel Perón was in power for um, about uh, a year or so, and then she was overthrown by a military dictatorship. So, uh, and that was the military dictatorship that ultimately, um, ultimately fought the uh, Malvinas War, uh, invading the Malvinas Falklands Islands and fighting the short war against the British. Uh, when they lost that war, a year later, uh, they were uh, deposed um, in a, a, a democracy came back, essentially. And that was in 1983, and like I said, they've had democracy here in Argentina, free democratic elections uh, for the 40 years since. So now you're all caught up on the story. Um, that's Eva Perón, and we're gonna go and find her uh, tomb in the cemetery. And when I get in there, I am gonna film, but I am not going to talk and vlog because there's gonna be a lot of people there. Uh, I feel like it's really disrespectful to those people to, uh, to be talking and vlogging. I don't wanna be that guy. Um, I do wanna film because it is, uh, it is a site of major historical significance and uh, we're here to film that kind of stuff, but I'm uh, definitely not gonna, be, not gonna be talking a lot in there. Uh, then, later today, we are going to go out to Chacarita Cemetery, and uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I really hope I am. And we are gonna try and find the uh, Peron family tomb, where his body was um, up until 2006, where uh, thieves broke in and stole his hands. And when we do that, we can talk a little bit more about the story of uh, the hands of Perón. Because um, if you can believe it, it's even crazier and kind of darker than uh, the story of Eva Perón's body. Um, Hola. Oh, por cierto. Gracias.
とあってなくてさ、チューンでさ、ね、いっぱいいるのかしら。Okay, so part one, part one of today's mission accomplished. We found, we saw with our own eyes and with the camera, so with your eyes as well,、uh, the tomb of Eva Duarte Baron. It was the Duarte family tomb. And、uh, Eva is in,、uh, interned there along with the rest.、Uh, didn't stay too long.、Uh, There were a lot of tourists there. I mean, a lot. It is, like I said, a major tourist attraction.、Um, you have to pay to get in. We did pay,、uh, it was, for anyone interested, like about 3,800 pesos. You can only pay with credit card.、Um, and、uh, I don't know.、Uh, something about it just felt kind of like icky to me.、Um, you know, there, I know I understand it's a big tourist attraction. A lot of people come to see it. They have guided tours and everything, but you know, a lot of people like. Taking selfies in front of other people's graves,、uh, something about that just didn't,、uh, didn't vibe with me. So we, we did what we wanted to do. We saw、uh, the grave of、uh, Eva Perón, and、uh, now we're going to head back down to the soup tank and head over to、uh, the other cemetery, Sh- Shaka- Shakarita Cemetery. I really hope I'm saying that right. I think I, I think I am saying it right. If I'm not, well, I mean, it'll just be. One other thing that I'm not saying right. Turns out for the last、uh, few videos I've made talking about the presidential election, I've been pronouncing Javier,、uh, Javier Millet. I've been pronouncing his name wrong. I've been saying Millet, like adding an extra I in there.、Uh, but it's not, it's Millet. Javier Millet. Anyway, can't go backwards. We only move forward. So from now on, hopefully, I will not pronounce his name wrong. And if it turns out I've been pronouncing the name of that cemetery wrong this entire time, well, you know, what are you going to do? Not much you can do. All right.、Uh, we're about a block away from the、uh, soup tank. We'll hop on there and、uh, check in again when we get to、uh, Shakarita Cemetery. And hopefully, we'll be able to find、uh, the former tomb of. Juan Perón, when we get there.